A combined strike force of American bombers and fighters move in to attack Japanese ships in the harbor at Rabaul. The bombers initiate their diving attack. Lieutenant J.G. Hamilton McWhorter noses his Hellcat over to stay with them. He pulls out on a strafing run on a Japanese cruiser. McWhorter runs a lethal gauntlet of 25 millimeter anti-aircraft fire and eight inch shells. In these situations, everything's coming back at him. Japanese heavy rounds, machine gun rounds, uh, everything is spraying at him. He is fearless as he's bearing down on these ships. The Hellcat's 650 caliber machine guns can put 4,000 rounds per minute on the target. Every fifth projectile is a white hot phosphorus incendiary round. And when they hit, you got a nice bright flash. Uh, I can still see it in my mind. The superstructure of that cruiser lit up like a Christmas tree. McWhorter pulls up and heads for the rendezvous point. Climbing, he spots a dozen Hellcats and 30 or more Zeros mixing it up in a wild furball. It reminds me of what you used to see in the movies about World War I. Planes all over the sky, exploding parachutes, planes going down. Hamilton McWhorter is about to become a Hellcat legend. Using both his eight months of flight training and special intel derived from a chance discovery. In June 1942, a U.S. Navy flying boat on routine patrol over Akutan Island in the Aleutians spotted a downed plane partially submerged in the soft marshy soil. It was an intelligence coup, a virtually undamaged A6M2 Mitsubishi Zero. The plane dubbed the Akutan Zero was hurriedly shipped to San Diego where it was rebuilt repainted with U.S. markings and thoroughly flight tested by the Americans. Having the Zero in hand allowed us to actually test it and to compare it to all of our existing fighters to tell where its strengths were and where its weaknesses were. That's not an academic exercise. That's an exercise to tell our pilots where they are strongest, where the Zero is weakest, therefore where to force him so that you can beat him in a dogfight. A key find was that the Zero had a disadvantage in a high-speed dive. Above 200 knots, its ailerons froze, restricting any kind of rolling maneuver, especially to the right. This important data was quickly passed to Grumman engineers and on to the fleet. Now, Hamilton McWhorter will put it into practice. McWhorter is heading into a swirling mass of Zeros and Hellcats. He spots a Hellcat with a Zero on its six o'clock. I can see a big piece of metal flying off the Hellcat. The wounded Hellcat is here. The Zero is right behind him. McWhorter is here. He will pull a high G climbing turn to get behind the Zero. McWhorter's Hellcat easily closes the distance. His machine guns shred the Zero's unarmored fuselage. McWhorter gets a good look at his first kill of the day. I look down right into the cockpit. Hadn't been more than a second or so since I'd fired. And there were flames coming out from under the instrument panel. He had no chance whatsoever. The Zero had no armor plate behind the pilot. Then, looking up, he spots another Zero at one o'clock high, 2,000 feet away. He pitches up and banks right on an intercept course. It looks like another easy kill. 
but suddenly he's jolted by a loud noise. The best way I can describe it is if you're standing in a metal shed and someone throws a bit, couple of big hands full of rocks against the outside. That's what it sounds like when your plane gets hit by machine gun bullets. Very loud, and you can actually feel the impact of the bullets hitting. McWhorter is focused on his target and doesn't see the plane that's peppering his Hellcat. If it's the bogey you don't see, it will generally get you. McWhorter target fixates on the zero that he's going for. And much to his surprise, he hears noise on his aircraft that alerts him, that says, get your head up and look around. Get your head on a swivel. A zero making a high-speed pass from above breaks his Hellcat with machine gun fire. Stunned, McWhorter looks around to find two more zeros directly on his tail. McWhorter is here, chasing a zero. The zero shooting at him is here. McWhorter never sees this plane, but its gunfire actually saves his life by alerting him to the zeros behind him. At that point, he's in a life and death situation, and he's got to take immediate uh, action to get out of there. Remembering the lessons learned from the Akutan Zero, McWhorter dives steeply toward the ocean below. The Japanese, knowing their plane can't dive with the Hellcat, choose not to follow. At that point, he looks through his windscreen and sees an aircraft passing uh, directly in his line of travel. McWhorter slides his aircraft into the same plane with the Zero and rakes him with gunfire and gets a kill. Now he's had his second kill within about 45 seconds. It's all just due to good airmanship, maintaining his situational awareness, executing that nose low maneuver when he was being attacked by an unseen zero, he sets himself up for an attack on another aircraft. It's an incredible achievement, one that's respected by every generation of fighter pilot. Two kills in 45 seconds would be outstanding. It'd be awesome. Fighter pilot's dream. But McWhorter isn't out of the woods.